Hello. 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 Um, I wanted to do a quick video about a library I wrote probably a year or two ago. Um, and uh, just do a quick overview of uh, how I kind of like getting my libraries delivered. Um, right here, we're in a new project. There's um, kind of old style library folder with a print function, which is in use here. And um, we also have a CSV file of some movies. I went ahead and just read that file, uh, string split it into an array. Um, string split, as you probably know, takes a big long string and it splits it into an array, depending on your uh, separator value. In this case, we're, we're using a new line. And then I went ahead and printed it out, and you can see that here. Uh, it's just got all these different movies. Okay, um, so string similarity, let me show you. This is the page for it. I think there's a thread on the forums as well, if you prefer that format. Uh, but it's pretty much the same information. I wrote this lot, or I got the idea for this library because... Um, I used a similar thing in JavaScript, and I was, have, I was having a similar problem in AutoHotKey where I had user input and I needed to match it to other things. And that can get kind of hairy because, you know, the user might not type it correctly. They might have an extra character or something. And as you can see here, uh, the library is called String Similarity. And the description is, it, it finds a degree of similarity between two strings based on Dice's coefficient, which is mostly better than Levenstein distance. Uh, most of the libraries you'll see on the forums for AutoHotKey have to do with Levenstein distance, but I kind of had uh, struggles with that because a very small string doesn't, is the Levenstein distance can also be a small number. But then if I'm dealing with long movie names, the Levenstein distance is going to be a big number with just a little typo or a, a missing word or something. So the one re big thing I like about this library is that it gives me kind of a, a number between 0 and 1, 1 being a perfect match and 0 being completely different. And so this will you can kind of think of that, about it as a percentage, like, um, oh, it's a 0% match or it's a 100% match. And any number in between, for example, uh, the difference between test and testing uh, can be thought of as like a 67% match. <laughs> okay, so let's show, show you how to get it. Um, uh, if you prefer to download directly from GitHub or the forums, that option exists here, but for me it, it's just kind of uh, time-consuming to do it that way. Um, so NPM is kind of, I feel, more modern and just the obvious choice these days. Um, there's been a few attempts at um, package delivery with AutoHotKey, and I feel that they've all pretty much uh, not gone anywhere. But this is pretty it's not perfect, but, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I thought I got that on our clipboard, but I guess not. Uh, what's it called? S string similarity. Okay, so um, this is kind of separate from, I'm sorry to include two different tutorials in one video, but I thought this might be a perfect opportunity to do so. Anyways, NPM is kind of a package delivery thing. And um, it started out as like just JavaScript libraries, but now you can send anything there. They're owned by GitHub, so you know they're going to be around for a while. Um, okay, so we installed it, and what that did is just popped it in here. Now we can continue to read the documentation here, but we won't get much auto hotkey uh, highlighting because uh, they, I don't know if this does any highlighting. So let's look at the same thing. It comes in here. and I think we should get some better highlighting here. Oh, maybe not. 
Okay, I thought we would, but I guess not. So let's just read it here. Um, including this library gives you three different functions. So as written here, you will get uh, an object with three method, uh, methods, compare two strings, find best match, and simple best match. Um, so let's go back to our code and we'll uh, see how that goes. Oh, actually, before we do that, let's grab this in your code how to include it. So we'll, we'll probably just want this stuff. Um, right here you can kind of see the probably more normal or um, more, uh, more common include style. Uh, but when, in, when uh, downloading packages with NPM, I find this works pretty good. You just set the include directory to where all those go, and then you just say what you want. And for simplicity, I, oh, this is not right. For simplicity, I just call them all export.autohockey. That way it's, you know, you know where to find it. Or you don't have to, I, I guess another idea would be like main.autohockey. But anyways, I find export to be pretty, uh, I think, pretty good idea. Okay, so it's just that we're just including this library, which is, you know, just a class definition. Okay, now, uh, if you are not familiar with classes, they kind of need to be initialized. We also have one uh, complication here. I'll just call it um, object string. I'll call it similarity. Like that. Um, and we just go new string similarity. Now, unfortunately, one thing I didn't really realize when I was writing this is classes don't allow for um, a dash in their name. So unfortunately, the library name doesn't match the object you get. That's my fault. I'm sorry. But uh, it won't happen again. Okay, so now we should have this thing, and let's just give it a quick test here. We'll do a message box. Uh, what was it? Compare two strings. And look at that. The, uh, the IDE even picks it up. I don't really know how that works. Uh, we're using here, what's this called? Microsoft Code, My Visual Studio Code. We'll just do a quick test versus testing. And we should get that back that, that dot sixty seven. Um, if you're not using this IDE, you might have to like open a, a Microsoft console or something. This one's just built in, and I'm using PowerShell. I don't really, you know, you could just as easily open up a terminal or whatever it's called in Windows. I'm sorry, what, what happened there? Okay, um, let me show you. It popped up on, I have another, my other main window is over there, so I might have to drag them over here. But we got that 67 like we are expecting. So okay, the class is included in the project and working. So that's kind of how that works. Um, I went ahead, like I said, we've got this array of movies. And just for... For example, I just want to go through kind of some of the the methods. We have what? Compare two strings. Oh, what was that? Object. Compare two, str compare two strings. And the other one is called find best match or something. Yeah. And then the last one was called simple best match. Uh, so we already did that one kind of. It's pretty self-explanatory. It takes two strings. Uh, find best match. It takes an or Let's go see it. It takes uh, one string and one array. Uh, the documentation reads it like this. Uh, here it is, find best match. 
uh, takes a main string, kind of, you know, your user input in this case, and then the target strings, which would be an array of things that it'll try. Now, one thing about this, it returns an object, and then you have to kind of navigate the object to read all this. I don't, is this even right? <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so you'll have a, <clears throat> it'll return an object, and in that object is a property or element called ratings, and then inside that is another array. And I thought, well, you know, that's nice, but wouldn't it be so much nicer if we could just say, hey, what's the best match in this whole thing? Now, you will get this uh, best match uh, property, uh, which has the target and the rating. But wouldn't it be more intri or wouldn't it be so nice if we could just get which one matches the best? And that's when I wrote this simple best match, which the same as before takes a main string, which is uh, a string, and then it also takes what you might be interested in, which as an array, which is uh, an array of strings. So we'll uh, we'll try it real quick for. For the example here, I wrote a string the user input. Let's just say they did Benjamin Button. And just to make it hard, let's say they didn't know how to spell Benjamin, and they, they put it like that. Or, or maybe they just did a mistake. Or maybe they forgot one T. So let's see how that does. And we're just going to, let's see, we'll put the user input, and then the, the array of movies, which is an array of strings, is this. So let's put that in. And we'll just print, whoops, we'll just print whatever it gives back. Now let's comment this out because it'll probably be mad about no parameters. So let's see what that does. Do we have any returns? I guess not. Okay, so we got back this. Uh, this might be a little hard to read. Oh, you know what? It's rating every single move. It's rate, because we gave it a whole array, it's scoring every single movie in that list. And they're not sorted either. So that's kind of annoying. Um, but let's say, uh, let's say you, you didn't know and you, you, your project was, you know, you're working on your project and you get this, uh, let's just call it a scored array or something. So just assign that, and then we would have to loop the whole thing. Let's say a key value in scored array. And uh, let's say if the score, uh, what would it be? Well, uh, <clears throat> let me see that object again, what it looks like. Oh. <laughs> I can't see it now because I commented out that line. Let's say a print. Let's see. What's this message box one of these? I think the value we still have to need we still need to go in. Here, let's go into this. Let's go. Ratings. I think that'll let's just message box that. And we'll just message box the uh, value. I didn't I didn't get what I was expecting. Let me just read that real quick. Ratings. Hmm. Well, I guess the Oh, okay. So the reason is I have a uh, array and then it's another object. So I have to say like uh, value dot uh, rating. What was it? what was the score? Yeah, the rating. Okay, so this first one on the list is 47, and we'll just do, uh, let's do value dot, what was it, title or target. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Oh, okay, so maybe it is uh, value dot target. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Is this actually sorted? I forget. I think maybe it is. Uh, returns of... Uh... Nah, it's not sorted. Can't be. Sorry, one sec. There's a internal function here. I want to see where it's used. Yeah, it's only, it's only, oh, okay, so it's only, oh, okay, I think I know what's going on here. User input, target, rating. I'm not sure why uh, this is not the curious case of Benjamin Button isn't the first movie on the list, is it? No, it's not. I'm not really sure how that's getting to the top of our object. Uh, score to rating ratings. Find best match. Well, anyways, it's going to loop through the entire ratings object and give you each one. So let me just go through that a little bit, and we'll see. So some of these are scoring super low, like 16% similar. Um, the movie name, the curious case of, is quite much, quite a lot longer than uh, what the user typed here, plus he's got typos, so. But uh, you could easily s sort this by score, and the, this one would probably be at the top, I'm guessing. I'm just going through here. This one's scoring is two. They're all kind of scoring in the 20% or lower area. So it looks like this is actually sorted by um, by how well they did, because we're getting that one first. So that's interesting. I don't remember doing that, but okay. Uh, so to make it even easier, we could say uh, we could even just say uh, like this first one is going to give us a pretty good score, uh, the highest at least. So we'll say, um, instead of looping it, let's just do, go instantly into some logic. Because I was going to loop it and then check the logic in here, but we don't actually have to do that because it's pre-sorted for us. So we could just say, uh, if uh, ratings, the, the first item in that thing, uh, what was it, it's called score? Sorry, I keep going back and forth. No, uh, rating. If the rating is greater than, oh, I know it's 50-ish, or I, I know from our test that it had to be, uh, it was like 55 with this current spelling. So if it's greater than 50, then we'll say, okay, well, they wrote this, but what the movie they're probably talking about was, was this, we'll just message box the Let's just message box the actual text. And in this case, we got the correct movie name. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, 50, well, that's kind of, it was kind of far off from what they typed. Uh, in a long string like this, 50 is actually pretty good. Um, as you can see in some of the Example texts, for example, here, it's kind of doing a, like a Craigslist search kind of thing. Where they search for this big, long string, looking for a green table. And someone, you know, part of the text that I was comparing was something really way different. And they got 71%. So, um... Obviously, play around with it in your project, but 
50, 60, that's a pretty good match. Um, whereas here, you, you see in numbers as low as 30 and 10-ish. Now, obviously, if you're searching very small, short strings, you might need to up that threshold because, you know, less characters is going to make more similar strings or less differentiation. Okay, and let's test out this last method, which is find best match. So we'll try that simple. Oh, I'm sorry. We just did find best match. We'll do a, a similar thing with the user input. Actually, let's keep this just for. OK, so OK, well, here, if you really want to get your project done, this is going to give you you know, it's just going to cut out kind of the, it's going to cut out all that logic. It's just going to, it's like, give them the best match. Now, obviously, in our movie example here, you want to have a lot of options to work with because it's going to give them the best option or the, the closest option. So if he types something completely crazy like, hey, I want movie ZZZ, you know, who knows what he's going to get. So we'll just do a message box. And we can either assign this. I think this returns a string. Yeah, I think this returns a string. So simple best match. It returns a string. And so that you can kind of cut out some of that object navigation. So we'll just say uh, best or closest, closest movie match. So you can just assign it as an object, or if we weren't you're using it anywhere, you could obviously just message box that 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 uh, call. So let's go, go ahead and see what this gives us. Um, some, let, let me do it. Different way. Well, it gave us here, it gave us this. Some, I, I never saw this movie, but Zach and Miri make a porno. Because obviously there's a couple of Z's in there. What was it? Oh, Zach. Maybe it's just the Z and Zach. Let's see if we can get a more interesting example like. Uh, do all, well, I guess I was trying to do all M's. There it is. Or how about this? HMM. Okay, so the, the best match in all of our movies, and all of our movies kind of looks like this as an array. We got, uh, what do we get? Mamma Mia. Which uh, makes sense because there's a lot of M's in here. And our input was, had a lot of M's. So that's kind of the library. And I hope this was useful. Um, like I said, I wrote this for a project I was dealing with. I think it's pretty good for, you know, if you're trying to detect what the user's inputting. And you, obviously, you can never trust the user to enter something coherent or perfectly. Um, this is also nice because, well, auto hockey, as we know, doesn't care a whole lot about capitalization. But if your if your project was um, using uh, case sensitivity, and you don't know what the user is going to input, this can help you out because those letters don't have to be exactly matched. Now the score will not change depending on capitalization. So, or uh, rating as it calls it. Anyways, I hope this was useful um, in both how do I you know, download and install this package quickly and how to use it. Um, 
and uh, like as shown here, you could probably put together some pretty interesting projects, you know, crawling Facebook or whatever marketplace your project has to deal with. Maybe you could find some good deals or you know, mirror them or uh, set yourself up an alert whenever something you're interested pops into the market. Um, could be a lot of different options. Anyways, that's it.